Hey everybody, I'm CJ, and uh, wow, been a couple of days since I released my last video. Uh, basically, I've had a lot of technical issues I've needed to work through, plus there's the fact that I needed to get a new phone. My old phone just wasn't getting it done anymore. So, anyway, sorry about that. I uh, found this article on uh, Polygon, and it's basically, it's a reasoned uh, defense of Superman. And I guess in relation to that, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to think of a character these days that is more widely misunderstood than Superman. For quite a few years now, I've kind of, <laughs> I've kind of had this, uh, theory that I've been working with that the the Marvel Universe, especially the Marvel Universe as it was created by Stan Lee, but the Marvel Universe has really given people kind of a warped idea of what a superhero needs to be, like in dramatic terms. Like, what does a superhero need to possess? What can a superhero not possess you know what does a hero need to be what you know and one of the probably one of the biggest casualties of all that is superman and there's something about the fact that a certain number of people out there have read a certain number of spider-man comics and so for that reason they believe they're now authorities on superhero characters and comics that Superman has just really suffered over, we'll just say, the last 50 or so years. There's been this really weird tendency to basically want to make all superhero characters uh, flawed, deeply flawed, and imperfect in some type of way. And you know what? I'll even say that for some, for some superheroes, that's not a problem. For some superheroes, it it actually works to the material's benefit if you give them foibles, uh, imperfections, if, if they've got issues that they need to work out. That tends not to work as well when you try it with Superman. And the reason for that is because there's an ideal and an, an aspiration that Superman embodies that tend to get sullied the minute you start giving the minute you start giving them too many complications or or too many um, <clears throat> too many personal flaws uh, uh, too many uh, personal challenges superman operates on a paradigm which i think is actually very different from the average comic book character and so in relation to that i don't know how much of this article i really want to get into because it's not that I think the writer of this article is completely, totally off base. <clears throat> because, honestly, this writer... And by the way, guys, don't don't contact this person. I'm, I'm sure she's a nice person and everything, but it's just... It seems like it's a great way to start a bunch of unnecessary drama and bullshit with somebody by reaching out to them. And especially with Superman, this is just such a sensitive topic for some people it's almost like religion in a way really you're better off if you just stay away from contacting anybody don't at them don't tweet them don't email them don't comment on this article don't send them smoke signals don't do anything just leave these people alone completely <clears throat> uh but basically there's this kind of half-assed uh summary of Superman's history. It starts off in 1938, then goes right on through to 1986 and into 1987. And then from there just sort of plots his downfall in terms of fan interest, reader interest, one might even say creator interest, and basically uses this very brief history to uh, circle back and make the larger point that Superman is actually a really good character. The problem is not with the character, it's with the fans, for lack of a better word, following his adventures and the creators who are writing said adventures. And there's... 
Actually, you know what? There's there's one thing, or not one thing, but there are a few things in particular that I, I really want to I really want to tackle. The common objections to Superman, and one of one of them that you hear people say, you know, pretty often is Superman is too powerful. And the writer has her own way of sort of tackling that. She says, Superman has a lot of powers. He can fly. He's super strong. He's nearly invulnerable. He can shoot lasers out of his eyes, see through walls, sees and hears across great, uh, across great distances with surprising precision, and exhales so hard he can put out fires. There are times when he's also been super smart or so tough that he can fly around in space without any protection, or so fast he can travel through time. Yet, no matter what powers you accept as canon, the strength of any given superhero has always been flexible based on who's writing them in the context they're in. And she goes on to make a few examples of characters who are alternately powerful, not powerful, basically just coming down to what does the writer need. And I'll even say that's largely true. Now, one of the few things I'm willing to give Superman's critics a fair hearing on is the range of powers that he has. I mean, when you, for me, I mean, look, Superman can fly. That has got to be a gimme. And so I accept that. He's super strong. Again, that has got to be a gimme. I accept that. He's nearly invulnerable. Not completely true, but fine. It's a gimme, and I'll I'll ride with that. But when you start getting more and more and more of these powers, uh, heat vision, x-ray vision, you know, just all these other things, super hearing, I think that sort of breaks a certain type of writer who thinks that Superman can only be challenged on some kind of a physical basis. And... The fact is, the stories that Superman is placed in, the enemies that, that, that he has to that he has to fight, the challenges that he has to face, those things are ultimately meant to be illustrations of both Superman's power and his goodness. A good Superman story will challenge him physically or uh, intellectually or morally. But it needs to have a happy and uplifting ending. And the reason for that is because Superman, as the sort of the personification of all goodness, the good guys have to win. uh, Spider-Man doesn't necessarily need to be the winner at every single one of his stories, simply because that's not the the paradigm that the character operates on. Spider-Man's paradigm is ultimately that he's Peter Parker, he's an everyman, he's kind of a loser, and he's just as interesting in his defeats as he is in his victories, arguably more so. Whereas Superman is sort of, in, at least in comic book terms, the arbiter of all good and righteousness. A good Superman story, a quality Superman story, a Superman story that's worth reading, needs to end with Superman as the clear and undisputed winner. Because good has to triumph over evil. It can be no other way, especially in this type of fiction. And and to finally make my point here, the reason that this kind of breaks certain type of writers is because they view these characters in, I think, overly simplistic terms, or maybe too restrictive terms. Superman is neither interesting to write about nor really desirable to write about because his issues are he's virtually all powerful and he's virtually all good. Now, the reason that's a problem is because we live in a pretty fucked up world these days. There are people who uh, starve to death all around the world or who die of easily preventable uh, diseases or they face other problems. And so it becomes an issue of if Superman wants to save the world, as is his, I would say his mandate, why doesn't he do it? He's got the will to do it, and he's got the power to do it. And so for this type of writer, it's kind of hard for them to get their heads around what Superman is all about. Now, <clears throat> you compare Superman to, to Captain America, who also wants to save the world, but Captain America has a lot of very specific limitations. He wants to save the world, but the abilities that he has don't really allow him to save the world, at least not single-handedly. <clears throat> if Captain America ever saves the world, 
it's going to be because he had a lot of help from a lot of other people. Conversely, another character, another Marvel character that Superman obviously gets compared to is a character called the Sentry. And the Sentry is kind of like the antithesis of Captain America. The Sentry has the power to save the world, but he doesn't necessarily have the drive to save the world or the personal stability. And so he's, he's got the power, but not the will. Captain America has the will, but not the power. And so from a very Marvel writer's kind of point of view, what makes Captain America interesting is his limitations. Uh, from that same point of view, what makes the century interesting is his lack of personal stability. What makes Superman uninteresting is his relatively perfect stability and his relatively unlimited power. How do you tell an interesting story about Superman when he has virtually no limitations? And that's the thing. This type of writer, the kind of person that this article is directed to, it, it's like they're not seeing the forest for the trees. Yes, Superman is all good. Yes, Superman is all powerful. And so what do you do to tell interesting stories about a character like that? Well, there are tons of things that you can do. The issue is if you think the only way to challenge a, a superhero is by putting him up against somebody who's stronger than he is, then yeah, I can see where Superman is too hard to write. He's too powerful. He's not interesting. Well, yes, in a very myopic sense, he's he, he, he's not interesting. I, I have to agree with that. If 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 that is the criteria by which you evaluate the character, the, the only logical thing that you can say is, the, no, he's not interesting. But when you realize that, a, that, a, that especially even a, a superhero story has different dramatic requirements and that not all characters are created equal, Superman is no more and no less interesting than, say, Spider-Man, Wolverine, Batman, Wonder, whoever, you know? <clears throat> And this is, I, for some reason, Superman gets hit harder by the superhero malaise that we're struggling through right now. He gets hit harder by that than I would say any other character. And yet, when you think about it, there are, when he's done properly, there are very few superhero characters who are as interesting as Superman. And I think one of the reasons why Superman the movie is just so fondly uh, remembered these days is it, it showed Superman at his most archetypal, Superman doing Superman things, and <clears throat> there, there is one moment of real humanization that happens in the movie, one moment of undeniable, unmistakable humanization, but all throughout, this is Superman being his most aspirational and ultimately for me what it goes to prove is that this character is amazingly interesting he just needs to be in the right hands and all too often he's not in the right hands but uh, anyway i'm cj and that's that thank you for watching subscribe make sure you're still subscribed comment like and share this video because it really helps me out also, you can find me on Twitter at Cole Loves Comics.